just give him some praise. Give him some honor. Give him some glory. Hallelujah. Lift up your voices. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Let's lift him up because he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy of all of our praise. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Is he good? Hallelujah. Is he good? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Amen. You get to sit down and rest, but I don't. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Did I hear something about knees? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for knees. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Good morning, saints, and praise the Lord. Good morning, saints, and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is so good. I'm so grateful for yet one more opportunity to worship him in spirit and in truth and of my own saints. Hallelujah. I thank him for yet one more opportunity yes. to serve him and to, to do what he's called me to do, do what he's asked me to do, do what he's anointed me to do, do what he's appointed me to do, assigned me to do. Amen. And as always, I'm going to do it, Amen. Cousin David, like it's my last time, because yes. it might be. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Come on now. Don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted. I also want to welcome everyone here that is online. Uh, and we apologize. Uh, Pastor, you, you missed it, by the way. You missed it. Pastor Trina was in rare form. Rare form. Rare form. Amen. Amen. But what she didn't know, because she couldn't know, is that this clock up here that we look at every Sunday to help us along the way, what she didn't know is that this morning of all mornings, it's 10 minutes behind. <laughs> it's 10 minutes behind. So when she thought she was a little bit over, oh, she was way over. But it was worth it. For those who were here, was it worth it? Was it worth it now? Was it worth it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we apologize. We thank you for your patience. For those of you who have joined, and we're grateful that you've done so because you could have done a whole lot of stuff. Amen. You could have been anywhere. You could have been gone out and done anything, but you chose to be with us and allow us. You trusted uh, us to do God's work of pouring into your life. And so we welcome you, whether you're on live right now or whether you're joining us later. We pray that the Lord is going to say something that will change your life. Amen. Amen. Now, um, <clears throat> we continue to pray for all of those who are on the prayer list. Yes. But I, I, I have a special addition this morning. We want to pray for Brother Vincent Hicks. He is in the hospital right now. And actually, those of you who are out there, I don't know if you can see, if you, you look on the camera, and if you look over to the right on your camera, and you see that beautiful bright suit that that young lady's wearing with that beautiful blonde hair, <laughs> Those three people sitting there are my cousins on my daddy's side, amen, <laughs> on my father's side. This is a special day, and um, it's because of Brother Vincent Hicks that this happened, wow. that we all got connected, amen, reconnected after 30-plus years. And so, Brother Vincent, part of his assignment is already done, but what I don't know is whether all of his assignment is already done. So we pray that the Lord intervene, yes. amen, on his behalf if it's not his time. If his assignment's done, God's will be done, and we can shout hallelujah because the brother knows Jesus. Amen. Amen. amen? So we can just shout. We can celebrate. But if not, Lord, please intervene. You told us in Philippians 4, all we have to do, amen, with through prayer and supplication, make our request known to God, and we will get the peace that passes all, supersedes all understanding. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. So we have a special request this morning. But we're also thinking about our sister Marlene. Amen. Marlene usually, uh, family, sits right there. I mean, right, right. She is my little center anchor. Right there in the back row. And she leans in. So she's always engaged. And so that's a beautiful thing for a pastor. Amen. I love it. And so we've been missing her. And so we are. Uh, specifically praying for her as well as everyone else, but I wanted to call her name out and let her know we're thinking about her. Amen. So get well soon, uh, Marlene. We, we miss you. I want to uh, give a little shout out and a hello to, to Jenny Perez. Jenny Perez is a beautiful lady who worked with my wife for many, many years. She's since retired. She loves Jesus. Uh, amen. Amen. She loves Jesus. She's a beautiful and faithful follower of this ministry. We're grateful for that. Amen. And she's a great friend to my wife, Pastor Trina. Amen. Amen. So, uh, Jenny, if you're watching this live or if you, whenever you get to watch it, because she has her own church, but she follows us and supports us on a consistent basis. So, Jenny, we just wanted you to know we, we love you. We appreciate you. We don't take it for granted, your support. And so, howdy and good morning and praise the Lord to you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, and I want to just make a special acknowledgement of our visitors. Amen. Yeah. All right. Amen. Come on now. Yeah. Amen. My cousin Montel, did you see him with his instruments? B Y O I. Bring your own instruments. Amen. <laughs> you might not know it, but he's a professional professional percussionist. Amen. So if we had a drum set over here, he could get down. If we had some bongos over here, he could get down. If we had, there's things that have names that I don't know that he says them and I forget them. Other things that are percussion type instruments, he knows them all. And he plays professionally. Amen. Hallelujah. So you know that rhythm that I have? It comes naturally. <laughs> That's it. It comes naturally. Hallelujah. And Brother David, amen, so good to have you here. And so great. Mary, I, I don't, does she sing in your church back in Mississippi? See, I could tell because they sat right behind me and I could hear her singing. I almost, I don't know, we don't have time. Boy, I tell you, if I had some musicians, I'd give you the mic. I, I, if you want to sing something a cappella, I'll give you the microphone. I'll give you the microphone because this microphone's connected to me, but we still have this one and I can reconnect it. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. If you wanted to bless us with something, but I'm not trying to put you on the spot or nothing like that. But when I think about, there's so many crazy stories. When I mentioned Br Brother Vincent Hicks, he's married to my cousin, also on my father's side. And that cousin on my father's side, whose name is Yvette, she's the one that introduced me to Pastor Trina. Pastor Trina and I went to the same church but never knew one another while we were there. And Brother David got saved at that same church. Hallelujah. Come on now. And it's the same church with the same pastor, eventually bishop, that originated and authored the confession of faith that you just said. Hallelujah. Come on now. Come on now. How about that? Amen. Divine connections. Amen. And it's Pastor Trina and my godson who was the one that shared so that the Vincent connection could happen. And he's the one that ordained us originally. You got to meet him about a year ago. Come on now. Who also came out of First Apostolic Church of Inglewood. Come on now. I'm going to wear out my voice. I'm supposed to preach, right? But how, how many of you know who are here in person, y'all missed it. The sermon, you don't know this because you don't know what I'm going to preach. Pastor Trina never knows what I'm going to preach. But basically, my wife and my daughter already preached the message. They don't know what I'm going to teach. We're, we're, we're in Isaiah right now. They never know what's going to go on. We're in Isaiah right now. We're doing the last portion of Isaiah, right? So, so they might have an idea. Okay, so I think I know where we're going now. We're going to the next chapter. So they might have made that up. They might have assumed that. But guess what? I'm not going right to the next chapter. They didn't know that, and yet they both landed right on the spot. 
Lord have mercy. Come on now. <laughs> right on the spot. And so I'm just uh, in awe of God. Are you in awe of God as I am? Brother Frank, are you in awe of God like I am? Lord have mercy. Mm, mm, mm. And I, I just don't, I only wish, I know we have so many of our, our family, our church family that's missing this morning. They're not missing. We know where they are, but they're traveling and they're, you know, a couple of them are, are ill. And so I wish they could be here today. This morning has been so special. And I have no idea when I'm going to see, when my cousins are going to be here. And David and Mary are from Mississippi, and I imagine they're going back. Are you going back? <laughs> Amen. And, and Cousin Montel, he lives all the way in L.A., and he has engagements on Sundays. Amen. So we don't know when this moment would happen again, so we don't take it for granted. So I wish, you know, even my, unusually so, my daughter-in-law and my grandson, Luke, are not, I don't believe they're here, so something must have come up. He must have gotten sick at the last minute, so I wish that they could be here to meet uh, family. Amen. I wish that there could be more connections this morning, but we're going to thank God for who we have here today. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We're going to thank God for the spirit that's been in here today. We're going to thank God for the songs that we're singing. Amen. We're going to thank God for all of the anointing. Amen. That took over. We're going to thank God for his presence. Hallelujah. And in advance, we're going to thank God for his word. And I'm going to take another little swig here and try to get my voice together. Mm-mm-mm. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Brother Montel, when he saw me, he said, man, you sure look like your father. <laughs> oh, man. Look, we don't have any sound constraints, which is a beautiful thing. In the hotel, we had sound constraints. Nor do we have time constraints. Now, I know some of y'all may have uh, lunch reservations. But I'm going to take my time and give you everything that uh, God has for you this morning. Amen. And um, but I, I have to admit, as I try to get toward the message, I, I tell you what's on my mind. I'm, I'm thinking about you, Cousin David. So I see you over there on your phone. And yes, amen. Amen. I, I'm, I'm just look. I'm thinking about your testimony. I'm thinking about your testimony. And I, you know what? And I'm not going to apologize for putting you on the spot. Amen. I have a word, and I'm going to give it. But I'm going to give you the microphone. See? You can be mad at me. That's fine. But you have a testimony that's just too powerful, too real. And I know that there are many folks who are going to... Um, listen or watch this sermon, watch this recording, and I want you, you can take a 30 seconds if you want, you can take five minutes, I don't care. I want you to get up here and tell these people, because it's powerful. When you told me, you didn't know how much it moved me. You didn't know how much it moved me. And so look, I'm not going to apologize, I usually would, but I'm gonna take license because you're my cousin, you told me you love me, and your showing up proved it. Amen? You can be mad at me later. We'll go to lunch, and we'll have some food, and you can yell at me there. But I need you to let God use you and come on up here and give your testimony. Amen. 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 He, he's going to make those knees strong enough. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. How's everybody doing today? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'll give you a short testimony, my testimony. Well, back in 1987, I struggled with drugs, alcohol. Uh, you name the drugs, I did it. Amen. So uh, um, back in 19, and you know, I just got to a point where I say, I'm tired of being sick and tired. I was, I was saying, hey, I'm going to stop, couldn't stop. I'm going to stop, 
I'm just tired of this lifestyle. And one, I never forget this day. Uh, I, I was really, really sick. I really say, I, I called my cousin, Yvette. I say, Yvette, I'm tired of this life. Yvette, uh, I need to come. I need to come stay with you. And uh, she said, come on, cuz. Come and stay with me. And if it had not been for her to give me that opportunity to stay, because I was in, I had to get out of that neighborhood in order to stop doing what I was doing. Amen? Amen. So I had to get away. You, got, you can't stay and think you're going to uh, uh, be okay. You got to get away from that lifestyle completely. So I moved about maybe, well, she, she was in Inglewood, and I was in L.A., and she, I called her. She said, come on, cuz. And uh, one other thing. And I had a warrant for my arrest. Never forget it. <clears throat> I got a little problem, too, there. I need no water. <laughs> uh, I had a warrant for my arrest. And uh, so I knew in order for me to, to, be, to, to, to do what God wanted me to do, I had to clean my whole life up. Warrants, whatever the case may be. So I said, okay, cuz. I said, I got to go. I know I'm going to do some time. It was about two weeks, but it was enough, you know. And uh, so when I went to court, I had my toothbrush and my and, and, and my toothpaste in my back pocket. Thank you, Trina. Yes, Trina. I had my toothpaste and my toothbrush in in, in, in my back pocket. And I went to the judge. He said, okay. You came in, he said, I'm going to give you two weeks. I think I did about seven, eight days. But after that, you know, everything was clean. I was, and after that, and that was back in 1987. That's when my mom had died in 1987. Mike know my mom real well. She, oh, he, he loved her. I think he loved her better than he loved me. <laughs> I, I really do. But uh, uh, that was back in 1987, church. I haven't looked back since. I mean, I struggled with Crack cocaine, alcohol, angel dust, you name it, I did it. But that's been over 50 years. I'm like, well, maybe 40, something like that. Amen, 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 amen. Y'all have a blessed day. I had just called a friend of mine. He, uh, he's going to go doing the jail ministry now. He told me, that. I tell you, man, God is good. I had a dream, and I was, and, they, and, and the pastor said, I want you to preach. Come on, come on, come on. Nah, nah, nah. Mm. It was a dream. Yes. Mm. And I knew, because I was struggling, because you know, when you, when you ain't doing nothing, you're comfortable. Amen. Come on now. Watch your step. Amen. God works in mysterious ways, doesn't he? Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Well, you know what? Look, I do have a word for you, but I wasn't going to pass that up. Amen. I wasn't going to pass that up. What, the part that he didn't include was the fact that he didn't just live with Yvette, but he started going to church yeah. at First Apostolic Church of Inglewood, and he got saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And that is why, why it's the testimony. Amen. Amen? Otherwise, it'd just be a nice story and good family love. But it's beyond that because Jesus got all up in the mix. Amen? Hallelujah. But she extended the love of family and the love of Jesus and gave him the space, the room, the opportunity, the grace to get it together. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. What struck me so much about the story when he shared it with me is actually the calling on the Lord part. He told you he was sick and tired of being sick and tired, but the way he told it to me, he was literally crying out to God. Lord, please, I'm at my lowest of my low. Please, Lord. Yes. And so he swallowed his pride and he called his cousin. He reached out. And she said yes. Created the grace and the space for him to get it all together. Amen. 
Hallelujah. And, and to God be the glory. The rest is history. Hallelujah. Come on now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. He says he has a little money in his pocket now too. Yes. Hey, yeah. He's a retiree like me. Amen. And he works even though he don't have to. Like me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. God is so good. Hallelujah. So I won't apologize, but I will thank you for indulging us, for taking uh, this space and, and coming up to the podium and blessing. Somebody out there needs to hear this. Somebody out there that maybe otherwise was not going to share this message might know somebody that's in your situation and you can tell it like I can't tell it. I have my own story. I don't have that story. And guess what? Because we talked earlier about the internet, because of the internet, lots of folks are going to hear your story now. So you let God use you. Thank you, cuz. Thank you, cuz. Thank you, cuz. Amen. So I'm going to use the rest of the energy and voice that I have left mm -hmm. to deliver a message that in some ways is already, at least we got a teaser, that's for sure. Sister Laquisha came over here, she called herself singing and, and, and she started preaching. Did you see, the, yes. did you see her position when she, when she goes from singing to preaching? Yes. Her body language changes. Yes. Hey, man, she sings like this, but when she preaches, she gets like this. Yep, yep, that little knee gets out there, that arm gets out there, woo, that head leans forward, the head, oh, yeah, yeah. yes, Lord have mercy, a whole new gear, but is, am I right? My son-in-law's over there, you all saw it, you saw the same thing I saw, you heard the same thing I heard, amen, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Well, uh, today, brothers and sisters, we, we have the second installment in a series as we said earlier, that involves the latter portion of the book of Isaiah. Some even call it third Isaiah because you could divide Isaiah up into three sections, distinct sections. And this portion of Isaiah, this latter portion of Isaiah, let me, let me tell you something, it's all good news. Now, when you're a prophet, you do not get to give a whole lot of good news. And yet, Isaiah, when he got to that latter portion, obviously God is the author of it all, but all of the, you've done this wrong and you've done that wrong and I'm tired of how come you didn't, and in the middle, when God was transitioning, he says, you know what, I called for you, I came to you, you never responded, but then he said, but I love you anyway. Yes, God. Yes, God. And so now, when you go to the latter portion of Isaiah, we get to see all of what is behind the I love you anyway. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. So this last portion of the book of Isaiah is all good news. And I thought about this, Brother Marcellus. I know we talked about this as the Isaiah series. I should have called it the good news series. Why didn't I? We may have to go back and revise those titles. Hallelujah. I could have called it the good news series. Isaiah's good news series. Dot, 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 dot. And so today we're going to know, we're going to learn and hear about even more about that good news. The good news that God had planned for his people. Are you hearing me? Yeah, now as we read in the Bible, and we will of course go to the Bible, and I'm, I'm going to take my time. I know the recording is going to be long because of all the preliminaries that are just a beautiful blessing. Um, but it's written the way a... a, a, a a prophet writes, and it's weird. You have to get used to it. You have to learn how to read through it and make sense of it. So just be prepared for that. We're going to have a little fun with that. And this word we're going to read today will be familiar. We've literally even mentioned it earlier this morning. But especially, Pastor Trina already covered this, saints, especially because it's familiar. We need to do what for God's glory? Slow down and pay attention, especially when it's familiar, because when something's familiar, we just assume we already know. Amen? Amen. And so we're going to slow down. We're going to pay attention to make sure that we get what was God's intent. I don't care what we've quoted. 
I don't care how we've used it. We're going to find out some good news that God had for his people, and it translates all the way down to us, and we're going to see it the way God intended it to be seen. Hear it the way God intended it to be heard. Understand it based on what God was intending to convey. Are you okay with that? And so the title of this message will be this, Isaiah's Good News Series. By his stripes, we are healed. Woo! <laughs> Isaiah's Good News Series, colon, by his stripes, we are healed. Let's bow our heads there, Heavenly Father. Thank you so much for this day. Thank you for what's left of my voice. Thank you for your purpose. Thank you for this place. Thank you for these people. Thank you for today's opportunity, Lord God. Use this, your vessel, to talk to your people, to plant some seed into precious soil. Lord God, and we pray that everything that happens as a result will be within your perfect will. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God, in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. So the headline reads, by his stripes, we are healed. Pastor Trina covered this a little bit. The headline, I said the headline, uh, 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 C Cousin Montel, the hook, songs have hooks too. The hook is by his stripes we're healed. That's the headline. I'm asking you now, does that headline make you interested in the backstory? By his stripes, we are healed. I hope that that makes you want to know the whole story. Because we are not newspaper clipping Christians where you just take the headline or you take one line in the story, extract it without context, and then it means what it means. And then you can perpetuate that and people assume that that matches but then it doesn't match up with the origin and then you wonder why it doesn't work you wonder why it's not reliable you wonder why then you start measuring success based on how much faith an individual had and really anything that God said other than your faith for salvation amen hallelujah and and yes you you're, you're required to have faith to receive nearly anything from God amen but we start measuring the outcome based on faith even when it's not supposed to be. It got quiet. It got quiet. That's all right. We, this is all going to be words, so you're going to see. So the headline is by stripes we're healed. Don't we love that headline? Oh, we love that headline. Why do we love that headline? Because it's about me. Why do we love that headline? Because we think it's something I get right now. I don't have to wait till heaven. Why do we love that headline? Because it does something for our flesh. And you know we love our flesh. We love that headline because we want to apply it to our flesh. But we're going to apply the word this morning. Are we going to do that? Yes. So a text will be found in Isaiah 53 and Romans 10. I'll give you a little time to find it, to you know, bend the page back, whatever you got to do. Isaiah 53 and Romans 10. And to be honest, I'm going to tell you this in advance. You can look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Because I believe that is the only place in the New Testament where Isaiah 53, where he says, by his stripes we are healed, is even referenced. And when you read that reference, you will see exactly what he was talking about, saints. Lord have mercy. So now we're not going to cover chapters 51 and 52, but... As a bridge, as a bridge, because we covered chapter 50 last week, we're not going to cover 51 and 52 at this point, but as a bridge, I'm going to look at just a portion of chapter 52 because it's connected. It's part of the context, and it helps us to understand God's intent when he went to Isaiah chapter 53. So I'm going to open up my Bible to Isaiah 53, just like you all. But I'm going to go a little bit further back, and I'm going to look at chapter 52, and I'm going to quickly speak about, I'm going to quickly read verses 7, and then I'm going to jump to 13 through 15. 
This is all preparatory. This is all context, but it's all connected. So I'm going to go to verse 7, uh, chapter 52. And it says, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, good news, that publisheth peace, that brings good tidings and good, meaning good things, that publisheth what? Salvation. That saith unto Zion, meaning God's people, thy God reigneth. Your God is on the top. Your God is a champion. Your God is the king. And said, let's jump over. So, 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 so you, you know, there's good news coming, right? There's good news coming. There's good news coming. And so he keeps on, but we're going to skip most of what he said. We're going to get to verse 13 because this is where he's, he's actually, now this is going to start, it's going to start to read kind of weird, that prophetic type stuff. So he's going to speak of the future as if it's in the past. And that gets a little bit of weird, get a little, little bit weird as you read it. But what, as we read it, I want you to notice God's focus. He said there's good news coming, right? There's good news coming. And then he says this, behold my servant. Don't let me demystify it. He's talking about Jesus. All of a sudden, boom, he's talking about Jesus. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many were astonied in the, in the King James, which means astonished at thee. His visage, meaning his, his appearance, was so marred. Do you know what? We all know what marred is, right? So jacked up. His appearance was so jacked up. More than any man. And his form was more than the sons of men. So his face was all jacked up and his body was marred more than any man. I want you to get a visual for a minute. I want you to think about the passion of the Christ. They got it more right than anybody ever has and they held back. If you call yourself saved, if you've accepted Jesus, I need you today to know what he really went through for you. God's going to be glorified this morning because we're going to make it clear. You would never let your child go through what Jesus went through. You would never stand back, put your hands behind you, and let this happen to your child, what happened to Jesus. Lord have mercy. He says, oh, it gets deep. It gets powerful. It's all powerful, so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him. For that which had not been told them, oh, hallelujah, shall they see. And that which they had not heard shall they consider that is so deep and I'm going to make sure you know why it's deep are you here with me and so he's speaking about the future as if it's already happened that's just how prophets roll but just like chapter 50 Isaiah is giving us another glimpse of Jesus all of this is good news, and he's focusing on letting the main thing be the main thing. So he gives us a glimpse of Jesus and the good news that Jesus was going to bring. Yes. Now, can we get into what Pastor Trina will call history a little bit? Contextualize this. This, is, this was written to Jews, so this is how Jews heard it. And now we're engrafted into the vine, right? As Jews also, right? As God's family also. And so I want you to hear it the way they heard it. Yeah. Isaiah was saying this and he was saying very clearly to those people. And now I want it to be clear to us. What he was saying is just as each year on Yom Kippur or Yom Kippur, the highest of all the holy days in the Jewish calendar the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, 
This is where the high priest goes behind the veil. The only one time during the year that he goes behind the veil, behind the curtain, in the temple, through the holy place and into the holiest of holy place where the Ark of the Covenant is. Amen? And the Shekinah glory, the presence of God. And he would go in there and he would sprinkle the sacrificial blood on the mercy seat for himself, for his sins, and for the sins of the people. A bull for him and a goat for the people, the scapegoat. Are you hearing me? And so listen now, so they understand, they're Jews. So the high priest only goes in there one time a year, and we're so grateful for that. It's our biggest day. And so just like the high priest went in and did that for us every year, here's what the Jews are hearing. Jesus' blood would be sprinkled for many. Sprinkled for many. This is me making sure I take my time because I get a little sensitive about the time and I want to speed up and I'm not going to. Jesus' blood will be sprinkled for many. Yes. And what you hear, what we hear, is many like a whole lot. That's not what it was talking about, saints. He's talking to Jews and he's saying we have this special ceremony and only the high priest gets to go in there and he's tied by a rope and there's a bell on it because if he got any, if he's off, <laughs> he's done for. Jesus' blood, I'm talking to Jews now, will be sprinkled just like the high priest did for the remission of sins for many. He wasn't talking about many as in a lot. He, meant, he said many nations, did he not? He means many peoples, meaning it's not just for you, to the Jews. I, I, th this is important because if you go all the way to the book of Acts, they still had a problem. It was La Cosa Nostra. It was our thing. It was all the way after the Holy Ghost fell, Peter still couldn't accept. That's right. He needed Cornelius to convince him. That's right. Still didn't accept it. And even then, he acted kind of funny, and Paul called him on it. <laughs> so he's saying here to a Jewish mind, to Jewish ears, God's going to sprinkle this, and he's going to do it for many peoples. Not just Jews. He's going to do it once. Right? We're going to have one last Passover lamb. One last sacrificial animal. Not longer an animal, but Jesus, but God himself. He's going to do it once and he's going to do it for all. He's going to do it once and he's going to do it for all. So if I told you that, if I invested something in you, if I gave you something and I said it was for all, then your job is to give it to all. So if you keep it to yourself, that's a problem. We're talking about God's intent way back then because we twist things. Are you hearing me? Yeah. So we did it once and for all, and this is such a big deal. Gentiles take things for granted. Black folks were told for a long time that we were cursed because somebody read the Bible wrong, and they're the only ones that had the Bible, so then they told the people without the Bible their, their version of the truth, with, which served them, not the people that they were preaching to. Because God cursed Canaan. Amen? Noah's grandson. Amen? And so Ham wasn't cursed, so Africa's not cursed. Canaan was cursed to be underneath the Jews. Guess who Canaan gave rise to? Palestinians. Now all of the current stuff makes sense to you. There's way more to it. But if you understand the truth, it will set you free. Amen. Amen? Amen? So all of a sudden, you'll be a black person being proud to be a black person, but also a, a saved black person loving God's people, the Jews, and having still compassion for even the Palestinians because this salvation is offered for everybody. Those Palestinians over there can turn to Jesus today if they're willing to. Amen? So we love them. With the love of Jesus. Amen. We want them to be saved. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we just can't take it for granted. Mm -hmm. Those of us who are Gentiles, which is all of us, we're grafted in. None of us were born Jews. Right. And so now with all of that background, do we have the background down? Oh, yeah. 
Do we get, we got the context. Now, what we just said naturally flows into chapter 53. See, but if you don't get that, you don't really know where God's mind and heart are when he enters chapter 53. And so we go there and we just, we'll start with verse one. It reads this way. Who hath believed our report? Sounds a little bit weird if you read it all by itself. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? What is he saying? He's saying we have this great good news and I'm telling you that what the good news is and I'm giving you an idea of the price that's going to have to be paid for that good news. Guess what? Everybody, all of God's creation will have the salvation available to them, not just the Jews through whom he will give it. So therefore, since we have this great news, it says to who have believed this report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He's calling them on something. It's a rhetorical question. He knows that they know what the answer is. He's, asked, he's given them an opportunity to live up to that example, to, to live up to that answer. Amen. Amen. The, 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 the arm of the Lord, his ability to deliver and save had been revealed principally to the Jews and the Jews only. So who had it been revealed to? It's the Jews that saw the Red Sea part. It's the Jews that saw Jericho fall. It's the Jews that saw the Jordan waters hold up and they got to walk over. It's the Jews. But most of the Jews missed it. So when he says, who hath believed our report? Not enough. <laughs> Most of the Jews missed it or they rejected God's offer out of hand. But why did they reject it? The same mistake we often make today. They wanted a here and now. They wanted a worldly deliverance. You can take something that God meant for way better than what you want, which is, I want something right now. I want my knees never hurt again. I got the Holy Ghost. I'm not supposed to ever feel anything bad. Oh, I'm not done here. Oh, I'm not done here. Lord have mercy. They insisted on a worldly kingdom. They insisted on a worldly Messiah. Oh, I'm not done yet. And they expected God to live up to their belief about what he meant when he said what he said. Lord have mercy. Ooh. And they wanted to keep it a Jewish thing. So now that takes us to Romans 10. Can you go there with me? That takes us to Romans 10. I believe you all are listening to me this morning. I believe you're taking it all in. I believe you are following well. Amen. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Amen. Acts, Romans. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 10. And I'm going to read verses 12 through 17. And I want you to take this in with me, okay? Yeah. Romans chapter 10. I went all the way to Revelation, saints. Yeah. I'm always wanting to get to Revelation. Here we go. For there is no, this is Paul speaking. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. We could just drop the mic right there. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Lord, have mercy. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So when the Bible says rich, we're talking about he's got, he's filled with the resources for your salvation. We might take that if I was a prosperity preacher out of context and try to make that fill up your pockets. But of course, my pocket first then maybe yours. Come on now. <laughs> it's the truth. So he's saying not Jew and Greek, no difference when it comes to God. For whosoever shall call upon his name shall be saved. How then, oh Lord, when he gets to questioning, how then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? You've heard this before, but now you know what he's talking about. I'm going to keep reading, and this, hopefully it'll become even more obvious to you. 
How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? We're talking about Gentiles. We're talking about you. God fought, scratched, clawed, told folks off for you. For you and for me. There are people that would have left you out if it was up to them. You live in a society where people have been left out, so you know it can happen. If they could leave you out, they would. And sometimes they gerrymander to try to leave you out. A little politics there, huh? So, so, so look at that. So how can they call on somebody that they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? Huh. And how shall they hear if there is no preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, isn't this beautiful? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Does that look familiar? Ah, uh, and it's, he's talking about the same subject that he was talking about before as we got ready to go into Isaiah 53. He was talking about the good news then in Isaiah, and he's talking about the good news here, and he is ensuring that you get to take hold of it. Amen. And I get to take hold of it. You take it for granted. You know, the United States of America, everybody was all Christian, and they let you go to church even when you were slaves. They let you celebrate. They let you embrace this, but it was not automatic. This Bible, my Bible, your Bible is saying so. He says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. Talking about the Jews who had it. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? Now the Bible just told you. Paul just told you. And Isaiah said, they're saying the same thing on either, on both, in both testaments. So Pastor Mike is just passing the word along. He quotes Isaiah twice. One time he gives Isaiah actually, you know, credit. And then verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, right? And hearing by the word of God. You've heard all of this before, but did you hear it in context? You've heard all of this before, but do you know what was on God's heart? What problem was he trying to solve? Because you can start a church, and Paul was planning to go to Rome. He never got to Rome until he was in chains. Amen? And, and he knew that if the Jews that were in Rome, even though they were kicking Jews out of Rome at this time, if they had their way, it would be just a Jewish thing. And this is how you get these schisms. And he had to come in and say, there is no difference. There is no difference. Amen. Hallelujah. But once you know this, let me tell you what's so beautiful. Now the Great Commission makes so much more sense. It's so much more powerful. Go ye and teach all nations. All peoples. Not just your peoples. All peoples. Baptizing them in the name of the Son, Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. This was what was on Jesus' mind. You thought he just wanted to get a whole lot of converts. No. He's telling them in no uncertain terms, go and tell all peoples because they all are supposed to partake of this. Amen. It's not just La Cosa Nostra. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Jews were the light. They were supposed to shine that light and share that light, not selfishly hide the light, not hoard the light, which is what we can do in churches. Hallelujah, or even worse, reject the light. So it's with all of this understanding, saints, that we can now go back to Isaiah. Let's do that. Isaiah chapter 53, we covered just one verse. Now we're going to finish all the way through six. Amen? Amen? Because this you've also heard, but I bet you never heard it with all this context. I bet you never heard it with all of this actual center of God's intentness. Amen. 
We are in the, in the center of the heart and the mind of God at this moment. And then we're going to now understand where he's coming from when he said, starting at verse 2, talking about Jesus. And I'm going to take my time because I may never have another opportunity. Amen. We're talking about our Savior right here. Right. We're talking about Jesus right here. So I'm going to give him his moment. It says, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, Jesus growing up before his father, and as a root out of a dry ground. The Jewish people were dry ground. They thought they had it going on, and they were failing fast. He hath no form nor comeliness. He doesn't look good. He's not handsome. He's like David. He was the run of the group. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected. This is Jesus' experience. Rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He came from heaven to come down here and deal with all this. And what did we do? We hid as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Amen. God himself coming down here, manifesting in the flesh, and we despised him, and we had no respect for him. Verse 4, surely he hath borne our griefs. That actually means sickness but be careful it means sickness I know it says grief and carried our sorrows which actually in the Greek means pain but be careful yet we did esteem him stricken he was here taking all of this for us but we us acted like he was wrong. We were acting like he was cursed. We esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. We saw, that, saw him as being wrong and God punishing him for his wrong, yet he was all the way right for you. But instead of being smitten of God and afflicted for being wrong, but rather he was wounded for our what? Transgressions. Meaning he was pierced through, which is why that had to happen when he was on the cross. But that had to happen because the piercing, it wasn't the piercing, it was the spillage of blood. He, he was wounded for our my transgressions. Hallelujah. He was pierced through so that the blood could flow for me. I know it said sprinkled. I know it said sprinkled in Isaiah because they were likening it to the day of atonement. But it had to flow from him. For our transgressions. For that wrong thought you had on the way here. For all the things you did before you got saved, David, and all the stuff you did, even though you saved, filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in all them tongues. Amen. Huh. Amen. He was bruised for our iniquities. This is important. I'm not going I'm gonna take my time here. This bruise means crushed. Do you hear me? Crushed. But remember, as a perfect sacrifice, his bones could never be broken, which is why he said it's finished and died before they broke his legs crushed in the flesh that means everything that isn't bone was crushed and so he had internal bleeding he was beaten so bad so when they pierced him it wasn't just water coming out it wasn't just guts blood why blood because without the spilling of blood there is no resurrection of sins Woo! so he was crushed meaning beaten to pieces why for your iniquities, for your wrong, for your sin-sick condition. 
The chastisement of our peace, your peace, my peace, was upon who? Who bore it? Whose shoulders was it on? And with his what? Stripes we are healed. Stripes meaning blows that cut. If Jesus took stripes and all he got was welts, wouldn't have done any good. By his stripes, they, that thing, that cat of nine tails, that, that whip was designed to rip open the flesh. It wasn't about the skin. It was supposed, it was designed to, 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 to produce blood. So therefore, but we were wounded for, he was wounded for our transgressions, right? He was crushed for our iniquities. And by his stripes, the blood that oozed from his jacked up back. By his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Now, so far, we've gone through a lot of stuff. We've been in Isaiah. We went to Romans. We came back to Isaiah. We all this stuff. We see how jacked up, how messed up Jesus got. So far, are you thinking about, ooh, I have an owie. I need it healed. Are you thinking about, oh, my hip is bothering me. I, I, I need it. Are you thinking that he went through all of that? For something that you can heal my hip but what about my ears I can't hear that well or you can heal my big toe but what about my tummy ache yes. Right. Yes. and guess what you can heal all that and it's still appointed unto man to die because we ate the fruit so you think he I'm, do you think he went through all of that to, to preserve this little blink of an eye really down here when there's so much more and so much better? Amen. Do, if you think about what, if you can picture Jesus as we go through this, if you picture how much he was beaten, if you picture how much he went through, you would know it cheapens it. If we somehow think we can just quote a newspaper clipping, a headline, and have that mean that he meant for us to be perfect physically down here. Now, we will not have any of that be, have dominion over us now. And we know that our Holy Ghost can heal any old time. And people were healed before the Holy Ghost got brought down on, on the day of Pentecost and since. Before the blood was shed and since. Oh, the Holy Ghost can heal anytime, any place. Nothing too big, nothing too difficult. But he didn't go through all of this and he never gave you any clue that he was talking about that. In fact, let's keep going and I'll prove it. He says, after he says... Let me make sure I found, where, where's it at, where's it at, where's it at? By his stripes we're healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. And have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him, meaning Jesus, the iniquity of us all. What problem is he solving? What illness is he healing? Our sin sick condition, which we have down here until it's over, and then the shouting starts. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on now. Jesus suffered greatly to save us from eternal prison and suffering. Amen. And instead, we get to have eternal life and joy. Look at Revelation chapter 21, 22, even in 20 with the millennial age. Come on now. Lord have mercy. He didn't go through all that so I wouldn't have a boo-boo to fix my heart so then my liver can give out. <laughs> he didn't do all that for us to be up and down and up and down and healed and sick and healed and sick and healed and sick and healed and sick and healed and sick. Why do you think he took away the tree of life? He knew that it was an inferior thing for us to live even if we lived in this condition. Inferior. He's trying to give you something better. Yeah. And you slapping him around saying, no, I want the here and now. I want the, my pie in the sky now. I want to quote the headline and have my healing when it doesn't work. And the world say we're crazy. It's not God's fault. It's not God's fault. Are you hearing me, saints? Yeah. What he's trying to give us was something bigger and better than that and more important than that. But earthly blessings and earthly kingdom, the here and now, it can cause you to interpret the scriptures incorrectly. It can cause you to try to apply them incorrectly. 
you can, you can, it can cause you to interpret them to suit what you want in your flesh right now, today, your imperfect self. God's plan from the perfect mind and the perfect heart is ultimately what we should be chasing down. Amen? Yes, yes, amen. Hallelujah. We get mad with God when he doesn't honor our theology, our faulty theology. And that theology is alive and well today, even in the pulpit. Amen? Amen. So God's plans and his intentions are the best for us. It's the best that anybody could ever offer. How dare we take something and force something upon him that's inferior and take the newspaper clipping, the headline, misapply it without the context, without the history, without literally, all you got to do is read it. You, I gave you some Greek and Hebrew, but you don't need either one. If you just read the word, connect the two testaments, what was he focused on? Salvation, eternal, and including you. If we were all as saved and sanctified as I think we say we are, we would all be running around this church right now. But we're so comfortable. We're so used to it. We've taken it for granted for so long. It's really not good news. It's not great news to us. It's like, yeah, thanks, Pastor. That was a nice way you took that New Testament and Old Testament and put it together. You know what? Wow, that's nice. Well, let me give you a, a death sentence because you did the deed. And let me let you think about rotting in jail. Let me let you think about what those hardcore lifers are going to do to you in there. Let me let you think about all of that. And then let me let, tell you that guess what? When you were ready to cry and run to your mama, somebody came and said, I'll take his place. Hallelujah. And before they could even get to the cell, they beat him, flogged him, jacked him up, mocked him. And he did the time. And you get to walk away. Lord have mercy. We should, we should run away. We should be shouting. We should be go, going to the mountaintops to tell everybody what happened. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So we thank God for his truth. We thank him for his true theology. Uh, we thank him for loving us and teaching us this morning. We thank him for the headline. By his stripes we are healed, but we also thank him for the backstory to the headline, the whole story. We thank God for including us and fighting for us and insisting that we be included. And if, the, and if Peter wouldn't do it, he called Paul. Amen? Amen? Thank you for including us in your plan for redemption. Thank you for not seeing me uh, a certain color and excluding me. Well, the truth is, guess what? We all started from Africa. So I shouldn't feel bad about who I am and what I am and how I look. Every, it's, it's a time for everything. It's a time the dark-skinned people are on top. Time that just at the moment, the lighter-skinned people are on top. But we all came from Africa, around about Ethiopia. Come on. Woo! Thank you, God, for telling us that we are included and we were included all along. They gave you these rights some years later. They gave you, they acknowledged you some years later. But God acknowledged you from way back when. He knew you before you were conceived. He had a plan for you. Every creed, every race, every color, every language. And thank you, Jesus, for your awesome amazing sacrifice Amen. Lord have mercy I hope Amen. that all of you all will join us next week for more good news Amen. we might even have, we're still going to call the series good news but you could call this great news Amen. Lord have mercy I hope that you'll join us in person or on the internet Amen. next week Amen. for more good news Amen. may God bless you and keep you until that time and as always saints that's it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs>